Hello everyone and welcome to this video on pastel analysis. Uh, we're going to be going through pastel analysis section by section uh, to help you both understand and apply pastel. Uh, so pastel is a very common uh, business tool used to analyze the macro external environment. So uh, this is the environment outside of the organization, uh, but not the micro external environment, which is just outside and consists of things like suppliers, customers, competitors, uh, but rather the broader external environment. So things such as society, uh, governing organizations, the broader economy, legal systems, uh, so things which have a uh, an impact on organizations, uh, but ones which they have limited ability to influence in most cases, uh, but rather have to adapt to broader trends. Uh, so PESTEL, like uh, SWOT, is an acronym, uh, but you may well see variations of this as well. Uh, you may see PEST, which is an, an older tool, uh, or PESTEL spelt slightly differently. Um, they all refer to largely the, the same tool. Uh, so uh, PEST is political, economic, social and technological factors. Uh, PESTEL builds on this, but adds in legal and environmental factors as well. Uh, whether you have legal and environmental to form PESTEL spelt this way, or whether you swap them around for environmental and legal, really doesn't make much difference. Um, so if you're seeing any of these three terms, uh, is really referring to the same tool. So what PESTEL is used for is really to identify um, factors that fall within each of these six areas uh, that may have an impact on your organization or industry. Uh, so as a tool, its major value is being a framework for us to arrange information in uh, in order for us to derive insights and, and, and have useful analysis from the output. So it's in of itself, it, it doesn't necessarily give us any uh, useful or even relevant insights. It depends on the kind of information going into the tool. Uh, so if you have uh, poor quality information going in, you're going to have poor quality analysis coming out. Uh, so it gives us a framework to understand the macro external environment, but we still need to make sure we have high quality information from that. Uh, so if again, we break down uh, the individual factors uh, and look at them individually, uh, what we're going to do is start with the first, which is political or political factors from the macro environmental environment. So the question here really is what political factors are relevant for our organization or industry? Uh, and there's a few questions that we can ask ourselves. Uh, I want to stress that again, these questions are just example questions. Some may be relevant, others may not be relevant uh, to when you're doing your own PESTEL analysis. Um, and there may be other questions that occur to you that fall under the uh, heading of political that you may want to use as well. These are just ones to perhaps get you started. Uh, so think about the kind of taxation policies which may apply, uh, labor regulations, health and safety and other regulations as well. So these things are political factors in that they're um, uh, created, maintained and imposed by political systems. Uh, and these kinds of issues do matter to organizations. They do affect the way organizations make decisions. So therefore, gathering together this information is important. As well as this, we have broader political attitudes and trends which may be relevant also. Um, and these can be often distinguished uh, uh, when there's a larger shift in political attitudes. So, for example, both in the US and in EU governing systems and political systems, we see a marked shift uh, in political attitudes towards uh, information processing online companies such as Google and Facebook and so on. And this is a very important political factor for these companies. Uh, so we can identify particular situations. Uh, so the EU uh, and the US both embarking on antitrust um, investigations. Uh, the US House of Congress uh, uh, calling key figures from the industry, uh, uh, particularly from Google and Facebook, to testify at congressional hearings. Uh, so there's particular events we can pinpoint, but there's also a political trend. There's a shift in political attitudes happening also. 
So if we move to our second uh, area, which is economic, so these are the relevant economic factors which affect our organization or industry. Uh, and for this, we need to understand really the economic circumstances and the economic context which our organization or industry is operating in. So is it uh, stable, unstable, i.e. shrinking or potentially shrinking or growing for your particular organization or industry? So that gives us an economic context to consider. As well as this, there may be a large range of economic factors for you to consider, but some uh, which may be relevant uh, as examples, inflation or deflation, and how that affects your industry or organization, uh, as well as exchange rates, which are particularly important, obviously, for international businesses that operate across national borders and also uh, uh, within different currency zones. The third uh, factor or set of factors we're going to look at is social and this refers to broader social trends uh, or, or social issues which may be of relevance uh, to you. Um, so some of these could be target demographic. So the target market that you're addressing, is that growing or shrinking? So whether that demographic is uh, is sliced in a number of different ways, so whether you're looking at a particular age group or particular other characteristics, uh, whether that uh, group is growing in society or whether it's shrinking is obviously a, a major importance to your organization. Uh, general customer attitudes regarding your products or services would also be important. So if the example we used uh, in, uh, in the political factors, so if you look at um, online information processing companies, so Facebook, Twitter, Google being the three most prominent ones, um, they are, there is a marked shift in customer attitudes towards your products and services, not one which has an immediate impact now, but certainly heralds a, a broader social trend, uh, which is of, of importance and interest uh, to people within that industry. So the fourth um, factor or set of factors we're going to consider is technological factors. Uh, so here we want to understand what technological factors are of relevance and importance. Uh, so if there are certain um, bits of technology which are critical from day-to-day -day operations, which your organization or industry simply couldn't operate without, then that's of importance and needs to be noted here, uh, as well as a, a, a look forward at what potential technological changes that could really impact your company or your industry. So things like additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, uh, would undoubtedly be under uh, uh, technological factors in pest analysis uh, because it has the potential to really revolutionize the entire industry. Uh, as well as looking at the sensitivity to your organization or industry uh, to technological innovation. Now, the fifth set of factors is uh, or are legal factors. Um, and for this, there is a degree of overlap with uh, political factors here as well. Um, but generally speaking, we want to understand what legal factors are most important or most relevant for us. Uh, so obviously, this encompasses laws in general. So but we can break this down into a couple of different categories or three categories which are a good starting point is to think about the impact of intellectual property law. So does your organization or industry um, depend substantially on the use of intellectual property, which is to say patents, uh, copyright or trademarks? Um, and if so, how what exposure do they have to changes in intellectual property enforcement? Um, the impact of import and export laws would also be of importance to any company which has an international or global supply chain. Uh, so uh, what potential changes or, or issues uh, in the import and export law uh, may affect them. And lastly, a look at consumer protection law, which is of obvious importance to any organization uh, which deals with consumers. So we have a distinction between customer and consumer. A customer is anyone who purchases something from you, uh, whereas a consumer is the person who uses the good or service themselves. 
so if you're Coca-Cola and you're selling to wholesalers and retailers, uh, so if you're Coke, you sell your product to, uh, let's say, Tesco, for example, uh, Tesco is your customer. But Tesco is not actually drinking the Coca-Cola. They're going to sell it on to, say, yourselves as a, as a student. So uh, you're the customer of Tesco, but you're also the consumer of the product. So consumer protection law aimed at uh, protecting and enshrining the, the right to various uh, protections and, and so on for uh, the end consumers, so the general population, is quite a fast moving area of law. It, it does have uh, quite a frequent rate of tweaks and changes, and that has varying degrees of importance and relevance to companies uh, that deal with consumers themselves. Uh, and lastly, uh, we have environmental factors. Uh, so we're using environment in a different way than we use it when we talk about the business environment. This is the physical environment, you know, rivers, forests, uh, seas, uh, mountains and so on. So this is the physical environment. Uh, and we want to understand what environmental factors are particularly relevant for the organization or industry we're doing pestle analysis for. Uh, so we need to look at environmental resources uh, which the organization or industry depends upon. Uh, so this could be fresh water and this could be oil and petroleum products. Uh, this could be wind. Uh, so there's a number of different environmental resources which tend to be important for different organizations and in industries, and we do need to identify them. And the second major area of, uh, of relevant environmental factors would be the impact of climate change. So looking at how climate change may impact the supply chain, how it may impact raw material suppliers, how it may impact uh, through the uh, the use of laws, for example. So there will be overlap with, say, political and legal factors uh, of laws aimed at minimizing the uh, impact of climate change or, or production of climate change uh, uh, gases and emissions. Uh, so there's a, a lot of different ways that climate change could impact your organization or industry. So that takes us to the end of our look at these six factors um like i said there's there's a, a number of ways that you you could see this uh tool refer to but it's fundamentally the same thing um, and what we want to do it organizes our thinking so we uh, have these six categories these six set of factors uh, we find high quality information for all of them. We identify what the most important factors in each category are. That gives us a good understanding of the external macro environment that our organization or industry is operating in. Uh, 